Hey, Laura, what's up? Hey, Cheryl. This is Cheryl from AC Innovations and Laura Hayes. So we're here to check in with you guys. So Laura, tell me, uh, what have you been up to lately? Well, I'm just getting ready for the summer. <laughs> it looks like it. I can't believe this is our last episode of the year, like for the school year. This is exciting. I am so proud of us. Not only did we start this we did it all the way through. <laughs> we finished it. I had a good friend of mine just send me a, um, I had I, this year, uh, some of you might know I published some research. And so I told a friend and she sent me a, a glass um, for adult beverages on it. <laughs> it, said, it said she thought she could. So she did. She and did. Was, That's, right. Like, oh, That's right. Good friend. You have, you have accomplished quite a bit this year, young lady. I, it's no wonder I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. In addition to having a toddler and, you know, growing a new baby, you've been busy with work. You uh, do creations of podcasts. I mean, I'm so impressed. Back at you, my friend. I mean, we've, we've definitely tackled this thing and uh, we have many more things to come and we have lots in the works for next year. Uh, maybe we'll throw some teasers out before the end of this episode. But, uh, but recently I discovered my fun find for the, for this week was this awesome resource that had kind of circulating around social media. Um, Amazing Kids had it, Lauren Enders had it, AAC for the SLP had it. And I just thought, wow, this is such a good fun find for this week because it allows us to talk about something that families and, and kids can do over the summer. Um, okay. So many of our kids have book lists, right? You know, you think about the summer reading program through the St. Louis County Library. and They've been doing uh, that since I was a kid. So that's a long time. <laughs> right. We, we, somebody was telling me the other day about the, the pizza. I think it was a pizza coupon or a pasta house coupon. It oh, used yeah. to be that you got the yeah. coupon once you finished yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Now, now that was it's my motivator. <laughs> right. Right. So they stopped doing that. But now they have little um, like stepping stone prizes. So yeah. last year, my, my son Wesley did it and he got uh, a book and I think there was oh. some kind of like coupon, maybe it's a magic house coupon. I don't remember at all now, but okay. so good. And now they do a, um, uh, I guess this is your extra fun five for the week, but they do a winter one now too. Oh, and they're all ages, including adults. So if you're, maybe I should do that. If you don't have <laughs> do two <audio> kids books. <laughs> yes, they do. They count. They totally count. <laughs> it's all I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Audible, all of those. And they have St. Louis County has free, um, uh, audiobooks you can download too so yeah, oh yeah I do that all the time so that's what I'm counting is my St. Louis County audiobooks yeah 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 good. so you can count that and then uh the adult prizes are pretty good I think there's raffles for baskets and outings and all kinds of stuff cool. so yeah definitely check that out but my fun find was this resource that had been created um by uh originally by Pat Mervine and of speak speaking of speech.com so let me share my screen real fast so everybody can see it um but she created this just one page handout but i just mm -hmm. thought it was so great because it when we think about reading and literacy and, and what we look for and talk about with it this these six components are right here mm -hmm. and it's kind of like a little book report but it has the visual supports with it so this was used with a uh, chat editor or the nova chatter touch chat line but I was like, you could do this with anything. You could do this if you have board maker online. Uh, you could do, use this with Pro Loco to Go, with Simple Sticks, any, anything like Unity, you name it. You could put this together very, very quickly. Um, in fact, I might even throw that in as a fun resource to, That's for a good staff. Idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, it talks about, tell us about your book. And then it has the simple supports for those listeners. It says, today I read XYZ. Um, I read this book with, and you can circle who you read it with. And this book is about, so your character, where it happened, your setting. Um, you can comment. This book is funny, happy, silly, whatever. Uh, Wesley would probably say weird or, <laughs> <laughs> or silly because that's his yeah. MO these days. Uh, and then comment about the book. And would you recommend it to a friend? I was just like, this is so simple, but well, yet so great. And we talk about universals. Well, all of our kids would probably be able to you know, I mean, again, my typical, you know, now almost 20 year old, I can remember, you know, so I was like, oh, I don't know, you know, I mean, they're just real quick to this. Eh. So this would be more, well, let's talk about it. And surely one of these pictures will, you know, fit right. the situation. So right. I like Al that. Almost like a graphic organizer, right? Yes. Where it's kind That's of helping great. us That's visually right. organize our, our thoughts about the book. So we'll throw that in the fun finds. What, what about yeah. you? How's your week going? 
Oh, my week's going well. I, of course, you know, it's got to be a Facebook post here. This was shared this week, um, Speech Therapy Services London. So not only am I, you know, trying to branch out, I'm going international here with my finds. So, but it's called Post-It Play. And again, it's one of those things like, oh yeah, duh, I should have been doing this. They talk about just taking Post-Its and like, if you've got a book, and again, all ages of kids like the flip up, you know, where you're like, something's hiding. I, there's always there's a spot book that I love that, you know, you're trying to find spot, but you just put a post-it over the book you're already reading and then work on open or see or look, find all kinds of good words. Then they talk about, um, you know, covering up images in the book and maybe like animals where you, you make the sound and then they have to guess it and find it. But it's just a little stack of post-its is all you need. And then the other suggestions they have is like, put them on yourself, you know, and then the kid has to tell you what body part you put the post-it on. And then finally it says make or origami. Am I saying that right? Oh yeah. Great activity for following directions. So you can just sit and fold your paper. A hundred uses for post-its. Thought. A little, really good. we all have them, all sizes, big, all the way to the real little ones and just make that a part of your activity. Gosh, and I'm aging myself here, but like I remember back in school when post-its like really started to take off and like you could get different colored post-its, not just yellow. Oh man, did we have some fun with those? Now they're but, fluorescent. <laughs> I know, there's so many different colors. I'm, I'm even thinking too, like for some of our home activities, like for summer, if you have have a, a word on your on your fridge or something that you're working on like I'm even thinking for Wesley like putting some letters on the yeah, fridge yeah, and having them yeah. and switching them out and being like what's on the fridge today let's see and like letting him lift the post-it oh the possibilities and again it just they're always at your fingertips you don't have to worry about it being a big production to have one so I like I it. Love it I love it well and again these are things that you can do with any user any anything over the summer as they have time um but when we think about when we think about how we pick things for users um we often get questions don't we Cheryl about about how we how we figure out what devices we're gonna we're gonna select yeah and again guys it's not magic it's not something that we just you know oh this is what we're gonna do it's like we really need to know the kid and we need to know the team that they're working with hundred percent. And so because we get that question and because we thought it might be helpful for our listeners to kind of understand the ins and outs of the whys of, of how we, we select devices and how we assess our students and their skills and their needs now and in the future, mm -hmm. we thought we would do an episode on the set process. <laughs> and the We're going to let framework. you behind the, bed, the dark black curtain to see what goes on in, the, in, in our mind. So we do want you to pay attention to the, the people behind the curtain in this episode. <laughs> I ha of course, I had to throw in a Wizard of Oz reference. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So because we are. We are the wizards. <laughs> Sometimes, right? <laughs> if it or, works. <laughs> right? Right. Um, and then other days we're the apprentice or, yeah. or the yeah. little one thinking, oh, I don't know what's going on. So right. yeah, no, I, I thought we could, we could sit down. We could have a little chat about the set process. So yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Let's, let's talk about it. Let's dive, dive in. All right. So we're going to talk today about the set framework and the set process. Um, I'm kind of excited about it, Cheryl. What about you? Well, yeah, I feel like it's something that the more people understand what's going on, the more they can help us and we can help our students. Yeah. And uh, we have talked about this a little bit in the introduction, but, you know, the reason that we want to talk about this is because we do get asked why, why did you pick that device? So that's, that's usually like a new team inheriting a device saying, yeah, why did say, you they, they pick this device? They weren't a part device? of the set. Yeah, you're right. They weren't a part of the process. They inherited the student and the system. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, a lot, one of the biggest misnomers, we'll just start off there, is that the set itself is an assessment and that it's a one and done. And, and we are so often reminding teams that it's not actually, it's an entire process that's fluid. And we know that all of the components of set student environment task and tools, uh, that framework that Joy Zabala created for us and is research based, we know that that is something that 
is is fluid and it's fluid because all of those components interact with one another right the student is dependent upon the environment and vice versa and the tasks are dependent on the tools and and the tools are dependent on the student and the environment and all of those things and they change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything changes change. yeah <laughs> does it does it have to i wish not but can i I'm still sorry. be 23 <laughs> you can pretend but no my uh yeah. Go and it's all changes that we, it, again, it's not, it's, we can't avoid them. You know, we, we, the kids move up to another grade, they get a new team, they, they grow, they, they mature. So now the system needs to grow and mature. And, and again, there's just, it should be fluid is the word that I like to use. Yeah. A hundred percent. I wish, I wish we were a little bit more fluid. Like last, uh, last night, Wesley told me that mom, when I'm bigger, I can steer the car. And when you're a little boy, you can sit in my seat. <laughs> and I said, well, you're right. When you're bigger, you can steer. Well, I'm not going to turn into a little boy. <laughs> He's really going to reverse those roles. <laughs> Not only yeah. is he going to get bigger, you're going to take orders from him. <laughs> oh, man. I think I already feel like I do. I'm in toddlerville. You are. You are. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> yep. 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 So the process, though, like you said, it's fluid. It's something that um, we want teams to know is fluid. And, and again, you know, just the changing of the team itself changes the environment, right? So we know that there's different expectations, that there's um, there's there's different environmental supports as a student changes buildings and teams. Even if one person changes, that can change the whole domino effect of, of the set. And the fact that it's, um, I always get a little bit, I don't know, nervous, I guess, when people are like, oh, we have to have a set. Oh, do we have, or then the R, do we have to have a set? You know, it's kind of like they see it as, oh, it's like its own entity or something. And I don't want it to be thought of that way. I want it to be thought of as just a chat <laughs> where we just talk about all this stuff. It's not, it's not part of a red. We're not looking for a whole evaluation. You know, people kind of get nervous about that. It's just meant to be, like you said, an ongoing process and, and a check-in and we call them resets, you know, if we kind of come back, but I don't, I, th I think I worry that people are like, like you mentioned before, one and done, you know, it's like, no, 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 no. Means it's, to an end is, is yes, the thing yes. that I think people Give think Give me something of. and it's fine. We're done. We're fit, you know, no. Right. And, and it's really, it's not a means to an end since it's supposed to help guide. It's not really for our purposes. It's meant to guide the discussion in the teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the, the framework is what we call it is definitely just, here's some things to think about. Here's some things to talk about. Um, I think sometimes we get off track with the talk. <laughs> I would like to be a little more laser focused about the kid, but um, yeah, no, it's it's meant to be. And, and I also wanna point out it's nationwide. It's not just an SSD thing. Um, I have been listening to podcasts, you know, I'm a, I'm a junkie now. Um, podcast junkie. And um, the idea of it, it just keeps coming up. I mean, it's like I've listened to different podcasts and people refer to the set. So I know that it's, you know, it's a, it's a thing, but it's a good thing. It's supposed to help us. Right. And Chris from Talking with Tech, Chris Bouguet, he mm -hmm. just, um, they, he and Rachel Madel, they just talked about it as well for one of, uh, one of their, their talks and, and the supports and, and all that. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's, it's well known and well loved and well used and it does work when done properly. And when you're, when you have that, um, that mindset of like, here's where we're at and here's where we want to go. And, yeah. and so we're going to talk today about like all of those supports in addition to the, where are we going to go? Cause, um, you know, we, we probably could even do a better job of, of setting that, mindset shift of it's not a one and done it's not a means to an end it's not just we're starting this and then the report like is check done. It off your list yeah right like this is this is the beginning of something this is the marathon that we're about to engage in and <laughs> <laughs> all those words that we've been using we're just pulling them all back over yeah and okay so i was listening to a podcast and this gentleman was like the at specialist he was a speech pathologist but he was the at specialist in arizona it was slp true confessions is what i was listening to and he used the word seamless. He said it really should be seamless. So I've actually got a little, I don't know if you've noticed, Laura, I've got this little piece of paper on my desk that says seamless. Mm. And I don't know exactly how to make that seamless, but his point was it shouldn't be a big deal. 
it shouldn't be a disruption in life as we know it for the team or for the students. What we're hoping to do is to build it into their time, but the emphasis on communication of what's already going on for that student. And I, and again, when he talked about that, it made me kind of realize, yeah, we do kind of make it a, um, now we're throwing something at you. Now we're, and our, and our teams do get panicked or they do stress out about it. And I want to find a way that everybody comes to the table already thinking about the fact that it's going to be just eased in and that student is going to benefit. It's not for the team's sake, it's for the student, but the student's going to benefit from it just taking them into what we already know we want them to be a part of. It's, you know, does that make sense? It does. And I think that that, that idea of seamless too, um, really kind of hones in on some of the other components of the set where when when we think about it in general i'm just saying we collectively even when i think about it we so often focus on the tool right mm -hmm. and the onus is on the tool and like can we just say these other things to get ourselves to the tool that we're going to use and so then if the tool is not working we do this reset to get a different tool yeah but but really like the tool is the thing that doesn't change. The tool is the thing that changes the least or should change the least. Right. The right. student's always going to be changing. The environment's always going to be changing. You know, their tasks with those IEP goals mm -hmm. that we look at, the mm -hmm. tasks that they're required to do, the communication tasks that we want them to be able to achieve, those are ever changing mm -hmm. and way more frequently than, than a tool would change. Um, so I think that if you can shift again your mindset to, Okay, well, let's just check in, even if it's an informal thing. It doesn't have to yeah. always be such a no. formal process. Like when I check in with the team, I'm saying, how's the student doing? Right. Like, are you guys doing anything new? Like, where are you at with your goals? Like, I'm kind of doing that informal set process when I'm asking those questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I, so I guess sometimes I have said out loud, um, you know, maybe we should call it something else. Maybe because I it did, it, it kind of it seems to create or um, generate this feeling of, oh, and I have gone to, I have led set meetings where there's like 20 people at the table, you know, and you're like, I don't think this is really necessary. <laughs> you know? So I want participation. I want the team approach, but I also think sometimes that's where we get, we don't, we don't stay focused. We, we get off on other things. And I don't, I, sometimes I think the kids, what we need to be focused and thinking about is kind of muddled, muddied up. Well, and you and I have talked like we have some things in our tool belt that will help us. We call it a feature match within the set framework, mm -hmm. right? Um, right? So let's let's talk a little bit about yeah. that. Let's talk okay. about what tools we, we sometimes look at, because I think sometimes that's where uh, teams really, really struggle. We're going to talk about a couple of them that we've created uh, in our in our tool. Um, innovative tool that you can kind of reference uh, in a little bit, but like when we think about feature matching within the set framework for communication, we, you and I know, like if you, if you're a new listener, or if you are new to Ogcom, there are hundreds, hundreds of options. Um, you, a lot of people think that it's like, oh, there's, there's an iPad with five different apps you could choose from, or maybe a Toby Dynabox. Usually that's what we hear, right? There's a Toby Dynabox. <laughs> There's so many options because the hardware is just one component of all the different things that we're considering when we look at feature matching a tool for a student to use. Um, we're looking at, you know, their communication now. We're looking at their communication in the future. We're looking at, uh, there's, a, there's a great resource out there. It's the periodic table of AAC. <clears throat> we'll put that up in the episode notes, but it talks about all the different things you need to have a, a successful um journey with AAC. Right. Things and, that we take for granted if everything's going as it normally would. So I don't think sometimes we appreciate how much, how intense communication is for everybody. And so when it's not easy, I don't think sometimes we appreciate how hard everybody's trying to work. So yeah, it's a lot. Right. And, and again, I think because of the nature of the IEP process and the academic side of things, we're always looking at it from a, a, a focus lens of um, well, what are the IEP goals? What can they do? Um, how does it go back to core curriculum? And with communication, it's a little bit different because we're looking at access. So can, what is their motor abilities? Um, and some for some of our students, that's direct access. 
some of our students that's in direct access like Skinny or utilizing um, support accessories like we've talked about in our OI episode. And that is a huge piece, right? Because if you can't access something, then you right, can't no. you can't uh, efficiently communicate right. what you want right. to say. Um, and everybody's, and then, yeah. every single student's body, you know, needs that individual attention to that. That's not a given for everybody, right? Right, and we haven't, uh, you know, uh, spoiler alert, we're going to talk to them in a future episode, but hearing, hearing's a huge component of it, right? What kind of feedback are you getting? Do you have hearing loss? What does that hearing loss look like? Is it um, conductive? Is it sensory neural? Like, what what are we looking at with, with regards to hearing loss for some of our complex kiddos? And knowing that that can play an impact, um, even for kiddos that may, may not have uh, a diagnosis of a hearing impairment, we also might see, we know like for research that students with autism benefit from hearing synthesized speech over human speech. So that might play a part into how we feature match. So hearing is a big component of that. Um, and then vision, right? We had our episode on vision. Right. So looking at all those little minute components of an assessment of what a student presents with, um, again, is it acuity? Is it CVI? Is it, what are we looking at? <laughs> right. And then the symbols, to, you know, we also have to make sure that our students understand that these symbols have a meaning and is that something that they've learned? I mean, you can't say it's a given just because you put it in front of them. Right. And text too, like where's their literacy level at? What are we looking at for that? Um, and just because they have some uh, decoding skills, like for some of our kids that are hyperlexic, <clears throat> that doesn't necessarily mean that we can just throw symbols on a on a page. They still may need the visuals to go with them. Like we just, there's so many different components of just the assessment of itself. And that's not getting even into the language or the communication partners, right? When we look at, you know, our, our language, there's infinite number of things that we can be working on. Um, you know, we, I think we've, we've honed on this before, but just, it's not just WH questions. It's not just requesting wants and needs. Right. <laughs> it's not just or answering naming. yes, no, it's Identify. not just naming. Right. Um, so, so oftentimes I'll pull out that periodic table and I'll say, Hey, <laughs> check this out because are they able to protest? Are they able to, <clears throat> um, debate with you? Are they able to uh, initiate. comment? Are they able to initiate? <laughs> yes. Yes. All of those different things, uh, that you have to have to be able to be independent. And things that don't, like, as far as it's, it's learned through experience, it's not the technology that teaches you. So all these kinds of things that we're talking about are developmentally things that we want our students to have gone through the process. And we, as their support team, have created opportunities for them to experience what that means to be able to direct somebody else or to get somebody's attention for for not you know not to take it to a point of being upset and crying but just like the hey oh you need something you know we we've got to give them that feedback in order for those things to to come together for them and we know that that's true because that supports natural language development as well. Every single child, every single person um, has language because you have learned over time through context and through multiple occurrences and then through corrective feedback that words get you somewhere, someplace, something. Um, my child right now is making up words and having a blast with it. <clears throat> and I'm trying to figure out what they mean, but you know what I mean? That he's learning through context yeah, what yeah. language gets him. Yeah. And, and again, the tool does not do that. The interaction does that. So, so that goes beyond necessarily the feature match, but that's any tool we put yeah, in place. It's no, only yeah. as successful as the, as the opportunities that it's provided. Right. And again, I think my reason for wanting us to really talk about that is I worry, my key word here, that um, it's, you know, the fix. Cheryl and Laura and the outcome girls are going to bring in something and fix it. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's not about a fix. It's not about magic. It's about a process of you giving that student that feedback and experiences and opportunities. And, and I, I want to write that all down someplace and just make it a step one, step two. Step three, step three. Well, and people don't, don't have that same expectation if you were to put visuals in place, right? Like you right. wouldn't put visuals in place and just say, go, um, you know, just like you wouldn't go to a foreign country and see a bunch of billboards <laughs> and say, I know exactly what those say. You learn through the context, right? You learn through right. feedback and like, oh, I went the wrong way down the one way street. Yeah. Like, yeah, I and, haven't and done the motivation that, but I... to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
that would be a big one. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. don't, go to, don't go to Madrid and do that. Um, but you know, you know, thinking about the feature match, those those components come into play because we have to be thinking about um, what where are students currently at, what they're able to do independently, what's what's snug versus what's imitative. Um, snug being spontaneous, novel utterance generation. Because I just was I was in a set today where uh, I asked us like, well, you know, you say she's saying all these things with visuals. What is she saying? Like, what percentage of what she says is spontaneous? And she said, well. About 60 to 70 percent of what she says is imitative and i said okay yeah so this device is going to support that if we teach it in the right way right it should right. help increase that independence and that um that spontaneity because only if they're only they're only going to generate what they really want and need spontaneously when they're motivated and when they have the carryover and the understanding of the words they're saying right mm -hmm. um we don't want them to be repeating after us and having mm -hmm. to do everything with an adult support. Right, right. Yeah, again, we, the, yeah, the, as independent as they possibly can be for expressing themselves, not just repeating what you told them to say. Right. And again, that feature match becomes so important because again, the hardware, we have so many different um, companies that we work with. What would you say about maybe seven to 10 companies that we work with on a regular basis with, mm -hmm. and they all probably have anywhere from three to seven devices that you could choose from. That's the hardware alone. Mm -hmm. Then, then once you have mm -hmm. the hardware, you have software. So that's what you're going to put on it. So again, thinking if your hardware is an iPad, then the apps that you put on it is the software. software. Well, mm -hmm. we can pick a specific software and then within uh -huh. that software. Yeah, you name you that app or whatever. And then within that, it just like keeps branching out to what do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want it to do this? Do you want it to do this? And it's wonderful because it is huge as far as options go but it's also very overwhelming because there's so many options and it's not cut and dry it's not it's almost like i wish math has never been my strong suit but i wish there was it was like well if, if a plus b equals c do oh you need this it doesn't work that way <laughs> no no and you know there there's many students too where um it's it's something where i'm like oh they would they would be successful on whatever they give if given the right opportunities um, because a lot of our I systems are core. Yeah. <laughs> I would rather them have the right opportunities with the wrong system and yes, be able to yes, generate yes, yes, what they need. Yes, yes. So yeah. I'm not as important as, as the you listeners out there that are working with the yeah. student. That's the most important that's, thing. That's is, the front line. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, you know, this is a little bit down a rabbit hole, but that we, we really need just, it's why we kind of started this podcast is giving more of those implementation ideas because that, those are so crucial to being able to feel comfortable with giving context over time so that kids can learn language. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, you know, if they're only sitting down and labeling, if they're only sitting down and matching with their device, like it's not going to get you very far because that's not functional language. That's not how kids learn language. They're not getting like you might get corrective feedback, but even then it's like, well, that's not it. Like, you know, well, not like you were saying, if it's, if it's not giving them any kind of, motivation or any kind of like feeling of power because they did it you know it's just it's a it's a drill you know it's a so yeah it's a drill task and, yeah yeah and the idea then if it's things aren't going well what do we usually hear laura oh we oh, need a different device. different device yeah let's get a different device <laughs> it's the like, device's fault mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so one of the things we, we talked about for this episode is um, when, you know, when things aren't going well, not just revisiting the set, but like what components of, of support can we try before um, throwing in the towel with the tool and switching out the tool? Because what we do know is that anytime you switch a tool, you're essentially switching the language. Um, how many of us have, have had that student where we, we give them a Big Mac and they immediately know to hit the button, right? But it's because they're like, oh, there's words on here. Like, yeah. I know that there's something, I'm going to get something as soon as I hit right. this button. I bet, and it's like a, you know, it's that cause and effect. I hit it and, but they have no control, no idea what's going to pop out of there right. verbally, but it, they know that that's the process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, it's, it's the process of like modeling. What does this language get you? And oh, you, like, well, we just said hi, like, that's what that language got you. Like, would, I wonder if you want to say hi to anybody else and leaving that, that's the that Big Mac or leaving that device there so that they can practice. Well, what does hi get me if I say hi to 
that cute boy in the hallway? Or what does hi get me when I say hi to the secretary? What does hi get me when somebody's walking out of the room? Oh, that didn't get me anything. Those are so important. Yeah. You know, if it's me, if they say hi to me, it's usually they get a piece of chocolate. So they're like super motivated. <laughs> but in general, right? Like we, we have to have those experiences over time. Um, and we know that even babies, we talked about this in switch class, but it takes thousands of co-occurrences for them to learn cause and effect. So if you can only imagine how long it takes to learn what language gets them in different um, environments, like it takes a long time. And so we can't just do five opportunities in speech therapy and call it a day and say the tool didn't work. Um, so one of, the, one of the resources that we wanted to give today is, is something that I often go to, which is just implementation like strategies checklist, like what are we doing? Are we setting up opportunities? Are we making sure the device is available? Is the vocabulary that we need engineered on the right. device? Right. You know, maybe a few words, but are those words helpful and meaningful? And yeah, right. Exactly. Um, so, so there's a laundry list of things that we can, we can go to. Are we, are we giving good wait time? <laughs> we talked about that, right? All those top 10 tips that we gave um, back in December, like are yeah, are we yeah. are we doing all of those things, Cheryl? And and if not, let's start there. Yeah, yeah. Because so, again, yeah. as communication partners, no matter what is going on, no matter how the student is trying to communicate, whether it's non-verbally, whether it's a you know gesture, a facial expression, or it's a high tech device, we as their communication partner are crucial in that back and forth understanding. Um, you know, we can give a student a device and they could be talking, you know, to the wall, <laughs> but that's not, that's not communication. That's just them pushing buttons. So I definitely think sometimes the people part of it is where we get sidetracked. And that's the other part of the periodic table, right? That's the last part is the communication partners in the environment. Like what's their, what is their mindset? What is their expectations? What is their comfort level? Um, which is why, you know, I did the research that I did a while back. Like I, I knew that people weren't comfortable and how could we get them comfortable in a place where they felt good about it so that they had not just the buy-in, but, but truly that, that good experience. Like you can see when somebody, you, you, you sometimes see it with kids that are verbal, right? Like you can see the bond that they have with an individual. And that bond is not because that kid's cute. Sometimes it's because the kid's really cute, but that bond is because they have interactions, right? They, they have shared communication and enjoyment within activities. And our kiddos that have complex communication needs need to be afforded that same opportunity. And when they have less opportunities to communicate on their device, they have less opportunities for shared enjoyment. And so you kind of have this rift of, staff being frustrated with with the tool because it's not helping bridge that but it really has to go back to do you have that that opportunity to to model and share in the language of the device mm -hmm. and I, I just even our kiddos like you said we have complex communication needs you'll often see that they do have a favorite person they all they you know they light up when that person comes in well why is that and i'm gonna bet you money it's because that person is a communication partner that they do have that relationship with. So we sh that needs to be universal. That needs to be everybody. I mean, personalities click. I know sometimes we get, um, you know, we'd like some people more than others maybe, but I worry that again, it's that idea that sometimes it's because that person doesn't have that comfort level is the reason they don't create that bond. So a thousand yeah. percent. And, and, and once they have that comfort level, things change. They see the student in a different light. They see that, that they can, they have so much potential, but we should, we should put that potential first. And we should yes. say like yes. that they have the potential if we give them the tools. So, mm -hmm. so that comes back to us. Like I always tell people, I'm like, if you feel like the tool isn't working, let's sit down. And it's not because you're doing anything wrong. No, it's no. just because I, I tend to err on the side of like, if we have, if, if I gave you the right tools and supports, we could see some progress and you wouldn't be as frustrated with the tool and with the student, with yourself. So um, that's a big yeah. misnomer out there. I think sometimes people are resistant. Like, I've got this. It's just the tool. I just don't like this tool for whatever reason, right? I don't. And, and they, they can have all like kinds of tool. reasons. Yeah, all kinds of reasons why they don't like it. But again, I've been known to say it's not about you. It's about the student. But you know. But yeah, I don't want it to be a negative. I I, I need to do better about making it a. What can I do to make you more comfortable and and feel? I wish people felt more comfortable telling us. I just don't understand. Okay, well, fine. Then let's 
do this and this and that. You know, I can, I've got all kinds of cool stuff we can be working on. It's not up to them to, you know, create it, but at least try it. Right. Well, and again, I think it, I've had, I've had some students that could learn any system and um, depending upon this, the staff level's comfort level, uh, I've, I've seen, I'm thinking of one student in particular, the devices switched three times because uh, the team was not open to learning a new system. And I said, well, rather than you putting the device in, in a back pocket and not letting the student have access to it and not um, letting them be successful, like what would you be willing to try? And And that's hard. That's hard, I think, because what we would rather have happen is is a collaborative approach where we have a system in place that we know the student's been exposed to, that we know the student has had opportunities with, and something about that has worked for the student. Otherwise, we wouldn't yeah. have completed yeah. the trial yeah. and left it in no. place. Right, right, right. Um, because, you know, not every trial, believe it or not, folks, not every time we trial something do we stick with it. <laughs> we do. But we we do our stuff. trials, though, we rely on feedback from the team. So I have to say, I've been told, oh, yeah, fine, fine, great, great. And then it was like, oh, no, we really didn't use it. And it's like, oh, so again, what's the word we're looking for here? Transparency, <laughs> open communication. And I'm talking between adults. I'm not talking about necessarily, I mean, the students are part of it, but the adult communication is huge. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about assessment. We talked about the feature match. We talked about, you know, what does set mean in general and what the process looks like. Um, Cheryl, what would you say? Is there anything else you wish that teams knew about the assessment pro assessment process for students' needs with an AAC system? Okay. I would love, love, love if, and I'm, I've, I've tried, I'm working on it. It's not like I've never tried this, but I would like to send out information ahead okay so we know we've got a student we know we want to work on communication that's okay give it no big deal but it's not again us just sitting around the table and all of a sudden it's going to come magically into play and it's going to be a perfect uh, match if we aren't looking at kind of the students needs and what they can do and what what they need to be able to do what would help i wish people came prepared so i would love it if everyone thought of the set processes at a collection, not as in plus and minuses, but as in here's where we're at, here's what's going on, here's the wonderful things we see the student do, because that's what I'm asking. What are they already doing? What can I tap into already? Um, and then we take that and explore. Um, you know, SLPs are already doing a lot of testing and things. You know, let's let's gather that data. Let's let's take what you already know and go from there rather than it just being, I feel like sometimes it's just like this real separate thing, you know, well, well now we're gonna talk about communication. Well, I need, I need, cause I don't, I, Laura knows I would love to spend every day with these kids. I, I, I want that, but I can't do it right now. So what can I do to get a better sense of them and their environment, not just the student, but what's your day look like? What, what kinds of things are you guys doing? What's, what are his, and his goals are important, but I also worry that sometimes we, we write goals to be, you know, we're working on that, but I, that doesn't tell me a lot about what the day is, what the, what the routine is, what the interactions can be. You know, I want the, the system, whatever we're going to be working on to flow with all of that. Well, and you talk about um, just like the days and, and the systems. I, I would wish to that we have a lot of communication partners throughout our day. I wish our communication partners had a better feel for language, um, not just language functions, but like language therapeutic techniques and implementation techniques, um, because I think that's so, so helpful. Even even some of our SLPs, like I think that be, when they see the device, they get scared and they're like well i'm like but it's just language therapy right it's, we're just it's, it's a tool it's in your toolbox output. for language mm -hmm. therapy yep and um and and i think sometimes too like i've been i've been really big about this with my teams this year is the the aac device is a, is an expressive tool right so you mentioned what are they already doing one of the things i always point out to teams is i'm like you know we don't often think about what they're already doing gesturally or non-verbally what are they showing us that they know um, because what tends to happen right when they're when they're doing something gesturally or pointing they just get what they want and people just accept that because it's fast it's seamless it's easy 
But what they're showing you is that they understand, like they're, that's a communicative function, right? Like we all use non, non-verbals and gestures throughout our day. So can we start to match that and pair that with expressive communication? Because again, we know that they receptively understand it. So let's take data, let's, let's write down all the things they're doing. Um, we call it, you know, pre-symbolically because they're not verbalizing it, but like, what are they doing gesturally? What are they doing with their non-verbals? And, and then can we start to uh, facilitate that on the device. And I, we um, in our SSD buildings and throughout the district, but I, more so with the SSD buildings that I support are being, um, I think there's a lot more attention to the communication matrix and how it's giving us that information. So I feel like, again, that has helped tremendously for the staff to have already sat down and talked about those things. So they bring that information to the table and then that helps to, to know more. And, and, and I always tell people, it's not that they're not doing it or, are, you know, it's just, you just weren't maybe picking up on it. You weren't as aware, but now when you know what these things are, then you, oh, he just, you know, because you just, you have that frame of reference of what we are looking for to us before it was probably too, too vague to, you know, to, uh, I, I, like we were talking about language wise, when you have your own student, that is very verbal, or if you raise your own child, then, you know, you just, it just happens. And so I, we don't take, we don't have a good uh, understanding, I think, of what is going on, <laughs> because it just happens. So I think now we need to break it down into what's going on. And then when you do look for it, you see it, you, and you, you reinforce it then. Like, you know, I could say, well, he, he's looking at that, and then he looks at me, and he looks at that, and he's like, well, that's him telling you. <laughs> that's what, you know, and that's that joint shared reference that he's but he's checking you to make sure you're looking at it it's not just a you know kind of a happenstance gaze he's he's telling you something well and and you know we talked about a few misnomers but i think one of the big ones too is that the that the device is going to be an expressive and receptive tool all the time so they're going to learn all their language on the device and what we know about language is that kids develop receptive language first and then their expressive language comes follows that. And so not that students can't learn new vocabulary on a device receptively because there's visual, verbal, and tactile feedback, right? We know they can't. But is it is it the most seamless? Is it best practice to be just introducing words that they don't they haven't been exposed to or words that they need to learn receptively first? Not necessarily. So I, Our go vocabulary, ahead. we've got to, you know, climb up these tiers to make it academic. It's like, no, that it may not. Right may not be our focus. Right. Or it, it, it might not be the best practice as far as like how to move them along the most quickly and most efficiently, because what they're, what that tells me is that their little bodies aren't ready for it. Right. Um, there's reasons that we have language development, uh, processes. Using language. Yeah. Like we, we have, milestones. have those. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Milestones. Like we have those milestones for a reason. Um, yeah. you know, as much as I, I expose Wesley to, <laughs> literacy, I don't expect him to have all 26 upper and lowercase letters right now because it's not developmentally appropriate. And nor would it be developmentally appropriate for us to do that with somebody who's still working on understanding, um, you know, this, like things like eat, drink, um, like bait, like wants and needs and right. color. Like there's, there's a reason they come before each other. Right, right. And put it back to like I said just developmentally you're take again because you know you therapize your kid all the time anyway but but I'm thinking you're taking advantage of something that he's showing an interest in right you didn't sit him down and make him look at letters but when he does kind of like and again stuff he's watching and you're you're taking advantage of that opportunity to say yeah that is a W just like Wesley you know it's it's just happens and communication could happen, should happen that same way. Again, through context, through shared experiences and through corrective feedback, 100%. What, what about you, Cheryl? What are some misconceptions you've experienced about um, supporting teams and students that have complex communication needs? That it's not gonna happen. <laughs> that, that they're just, oh, well, he'll just never, oh, well, you know, it's like, no, no. Uh, yeah, they or, or that the tool itself is too high, right? Well, yeah, no, but even those kiddos that are we're not even tool based yet, just you know, how much more could we be doing? 
when we do systematically work on it. Um, so that's one is that, you know, it's just, there's a, um, and, you know, we've, I've heard feedback of, well, yeah, he, he's never going to get this. He's never going to learn it. It's like, no, 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 no. And our kids pick up on that. They know when you think you, they can do something. Well, it's so um, tricky too, right? Because like we hear that a lot with pod, right? Like, oh, this is way too much for them. Like they just, just give us two buttons. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, and like it might be too tricky for them now, but you don't like, you, you also, you, you, don't see you don't learn it if you're not exposed to it over time and you need all those modeling opportunities and co-occurrences to be exposed to it. Mm -hmm. And then also what we, we tend to find, I had, I had a team that would want to switch out to a device every eight weeks or so because the student <laughs> but, but what, here's what happened the student started to habituate and the student in in my professional and personal opinion was was habituating because he was bored and so yeah. it was his way of controlling the situation um he didn't have the language that he needed it was right. it was too low but th but because he wasn't performing and he wasn't yes. accurate yes. and he wasn't yes. And so we really started to have to look at the trend. Like, well, what does the trend show us? Like, does he do it five times in a row? Then why are we doing it? Like yeah, at the beginning, no. he's got it. So why are yeah. we honing yeah. in no. on this? Like, right. let's move forward, push forward. Right. Um, so, you know, the data, the, oh yeah. man, the data, I love data, right? And you know me, I love <laughs> yeah. data, but I also hate data because sometimes we get stuck on- It's a four on, letter word. Yeah, we get stuck. <laughs> We get stuck. So well, and my thing too, Laura, yeah. is also too, when we talk about, you know, goals and IEPs, I have said many a time, I want to write IEP goals for the staff. Yeah. <laughs> and when they've met their death, <laughs> then we'll work on it again. Because again, it's it's not, these kids are needing us to teach, not to just to make them yeah. perform. Well, and I told you this the other day, and my um, I heard this from another facilitator uh, nationally, and I loved this. Is is the idea that you know we we know that you guys are out there, and you are the expectations are are just monumental, and what is expected out of the students and the staff every single day, and how much data we're being told they have to take, and um, how everything has to align to core curriculums. But with regards to communication, I loved this phrase. I give you permission to do less. If you only take data <laughs> at the end of your 30 minute session, after you've modeled for 15 minutes and just given them well, bombardment of language, like that's okay. That's okay. You don't have to be taking it every eight seconds because chances are that means that you're not, you're not giving them enough opportunities to be exposed to it before you're testing them. Right. You're and testing the before teaching. The relationship between the speaker and the listener is more important than the output. And when Terry and I teach the goal writing class, we talk about quality over quantity. We know that it takes communication, a, kiddos that use the AC communication systems, much longer than those who have verbal communication. Um, I think it's like over 100 times longer, in fact. So we're not going to get 10 to 20 opportunities. We may only get two. But I would rather get two independent opportunities after modeling than we'll touch, say this, touch this, touch this, find this, because again, I've just given them a maximum prompt and what have they really shown me that they've wanted to say? Nothing. They've only showed me that they've complied. Right. Was, yeah, they follow directions. Yeah. So no. And the reason to communicate needs to be from the student out. Yeah. <laughs> so if we don't make it fun and make it, then, you know, again, either they're going to they do refuse sometimes give them give them the option or give them credit for being able to say i don't want to do this and that's that is okay staff doesn't like to hear that but it's it's okay but then also too how much more could we get when it's because there's a relationship and because they're engaged and because they're having fun then what they do say is legit it's from them it's 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 spontaneous novel you know and it's something that they wanted to do yeah yeah and so a ton of our resources in the episode folder today um, are going yeah, to be, <laughs> we, ha we have quite a few, but we want you guys to be able to walk away. We have, um, you know, we'll, we'll touch on a few of them in, in the tool highlight. Um, and, you know, as far as probably go back to them at some point in a future episode as well, but just know that those there's, there's checklists, there's support implementation tools. There's, um, there's a really great resource from the AD, ADP, right? Cheryl, did I miss up my 
ATP. ATP, thank you. ATP, which again, Chris Bouguet. Assistive technology yeah. plan, I think is what it is. That's what it is, <laughs> yes. Um, and it talks about, like you talked about kind of pre-macking before we have these these set meetings and, and talking about the set framework. Um, there, are, there are tools based off of what you see the student, um, their, their communication level and, and yeah. where they're at currently. They're at. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can use those assessments and come to the table with that and say, here's where they're at here's what what we need and, and we can really hone in on the feature match based off of what you're doing so love that resource i'm definitely gonna hone in on that and keep keep that in my back pocket um but then thinking about the planning right so we talked about the set process and the set framework being not just an assessment not a means to an end but a fluid hopefully seamless process that we can come back to over time to help support as the student and the staff and, and all that changes. So um, I know Cheryl, you've added quite a few resources that help that um, idea that's not here and now, it's it's the big picture. Right. And, and as far as with both communication is just growth, but goal writing, let's pass along to the next team where what the student already is doing and then what's next. As far as I want them to look at the now, but in the future, but I also want us to have more of a trajectory. I got big words today um, of what's coming next so that we, we pass, because we know our kids get, they, they move. <laughs> they go to different teachers, different therapists. They go to different buildings. And I want something to go along with them saying, this is what we've worked on. And now this is what's next so that we don't get stagnant. We don't kind of keep drilling. I think sometimes we have, well, he hasn't met that goal. He hasn't mastered. It's like, uh, but there could be more participation, more engagement if it was a different way of looking on communication. So I like to look ahead. I want us to have a plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and again, what are they doing now? Like, what are you observing? Um, as Jen Magino said in a previous episode, like sometimes it just helps to sit down and observe a student and watch what they do and say, oh, like, I didn't notice that they were really honing in on that. Maybe we could target that, make that a skill, um, incorporate that into our current goal. Like there's lots of different ways you can do that just by observing and just by thinking big picture. It's not just about being able to, um, I think again, we, we go back to those WH questions because we, we already asked WH questions throughout their whole day. What do you want to eat? What do you want to drink? Where are we going next? What are we going to do? do that? Who's that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why'd yeah. you throw the milk at me? <laughs> Can't believe you did that. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think just thinking about how we can shape it differently. But is that, Laura, because we do that, we do a lot of WH question goals because it's easier to take data. We ask a question and we expect a response. And I want our data to be more about he participated. He attended to what was going on. He, <laughs> she, I'm, I'm getting that I'm biased here on my boys, aren't I? She, you know, initiated. I want that kind of sh data showing growth rather than finding the word. Well, again, quality, right? Like mm -hmm. how excited do we get when some, a student on their own, generate something, says it, and you're like, that's yeah. the first time they've said that. Yeah. And we love those stories. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's the bread and butter. That's what that's the golden ticket, as we like to call it. That's what we really want. Um, but it's it's not easy. And again, if if you're struggling with your goals, if you're struggling with how to set up, like again, the thing that I, I feel like I go out the most and I have the most joy with is is going out and helping construct how are we going to target that goal? Um, and, and some, I'm not saying it's always one individual team member. Sometimes it's going really well in speech, but we can't carry that over to, um, right. We can't, we can't carry it over to outside of speech. I just had one the other day where, because it was so structured, he had it all down in speech, but he wasn't carrying it over to the classroom. Sometimes it's not carrying it over to Jen Ed. Sometimes it's not carrying it over to home. Oh yeah. And because just like you're talking about, we've got a routine, we've got to say, then it doesn't carry over even just within a communication partner um, because that, again, that relationship, the student kind of just knows what you're expecting and what they do, but then somebody new walks in. And that's what we have a lot of times when we talk about early childhood to school age. Early childhood will be like, oh yeah, yeah. And they're very positive, very, you know, 
excited about what the student's doing. And then we get to school age, which is a brand new team, brand new building, brand new everything. And they're like, well, we don't see this. It's like, oh, I think he kind of got, he, she got used to that person and what they were doing and the kinds of activities. So it's not that the student has mastered this communication. They've learned it in that setting. That context. They didn't get enough corrective feedback in different contexts to generalize that skill or that and, language. And again, the income, the team receiving the student shouldn't generalize that, oh, well, he's got this. And oh, now he's refusing to, you know, it's like, ah, no, 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 it's, you know, right. so. Or it's the tool's fault. He never did that tool. There right. was, or the, right, right, I've, I've right. even had teams oh, say yeah. like, like they, something else. Mm -hmm. I've even, well, I've even had teams say like, there's no way they, this data they took was, was raw. Oh, like, I've, oh. I've had many actually accuse people of you know, generating yeah. false data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, so I think it goes back to, well, A, we have to write really good goals so that mm -hmm. anybody can pick up our goal and do right. the same thing and, and be successful and know where the student's currently functioning. That's yeah. part of the issue, which is why we created the goal writing class for AAC. Right. Right. <laughs> Not plugging that right now because we're still in the middle of COVID, but, right. but it is a, it is a right. good class to be able to kind of. And there are resources available to, to learn, you don't, you know, in, in the meantime. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think we just need to shift our mindset and, and really um, think about strategies, right? Like mm -hmm. what strategies were working, um, mm -hmm. what strategies maybe weren't working and what can, how can we set up or engineer the environment and vocabulary differently uh, rather than, than switching the tool or, yeah. and, and again, if, if we come back to the table, it's not necessarily that we're gonna come back to the table and switch the tool. It might be that we're switching, the student has changed or yeah. Uh, yeah. again, environment being the staff has changed. So what do we need to shift to support? Yeah, and if we do need to change a tool, then we need to know why, not just why, but what's what would be best? What, what are we going for? And if it's just, oh, that didn't work, that doesn't help me understand what I need to try next. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. I also want the analogy of pulling a rug out from underneath somebody. When you rip a tool out, when, if a kid is familiar, whether they've mastered or whether they're using it all the time, that's a different you know, question, but just the familiarity, there's comfort because they have been there with that tool. You rip that out, you're like, again, their feet are just flying out from underneath them because that's not okay to just throw something at its place. So I, I, that's my least resort is to change everything. I may change the number of cells. I may change um, maybe hiding some cells or things like that, but I'm not going to be easily convinced that it's just a matter of ripping this out and put something else in its place. So, so think about right. that. Right. hundred percent. So, um, and, and again, just thinking about the fluidity and trying to keep it seamless for the student, trying not to necessarily make big changes because then we don't know what worked and what didn't work. Um, but what, what, what small changes can we make? So when we think about the set and we think about, and, and I guess too, it goes back to like, you have that those resources for the big plan. If you have a big plan and that plan stays with the student, then um, even even if they're they're showing some regression because the environment's new and they have new routines to learn. Something and, different. Um, and we do know that like just development wise, when you're trying to learn something new, even things that you had, you do show regression, right? We know that even, that's why we have ESY, right? Like <laughs> you, you have to have all that in, in, in consideration. Well, and sometimes our kids are working on motor skills. So we know again, developmentally, that if they're kind of focused on motor skills, then language is just gonna be a little, you know, quiet for a while. Whereas if they're working on language, then maybe they're not running up and down. Anyway, it's, it's not everybody's dealing with everything, but just be conscious, be, be um, compassionate. Yeah, so I think, you know, just to summarize today, I think we hope that it uh, it's it's been helpful to kind of see the different components of how we pick what we pick in, in as far as feature matches go. Um, you know, looking at it's not just the hardware, it's not just the software, it's not just what everybody else in the classroom has. Soft tech or low tech or yeah, it's it's all the things and it's a fluid process, right? We we are looking at it as a framework to help us guide not just where we're at now, but what their communication needs are in the future um, and what what their needs are gonna be long-term. So mm -hmm. so all of those components. So check, please check out the resources when you have time because we did, we put a lot of time in trying to find some resources. There's a great PowerPoint from Joy Zabala that talks more about the SET framework, how it interacts Person with UDL. Person who created it, she, she, she's taught it many, many times. We know that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it talks about how to integrate it with UDL and some of the misnomers around it. It talks about we have resources in there, like I said, if, if your trials aren't going well, like a strategies checklist. Um, we do have uh, a few years ago now, <laughs> Angie and I um, put together all the different features within some of our most prominently used devices and softwares. Mm -hmm. So that's on there and you can see what we really mm -hmm. look at when we look at, does it have scanning? Does it have um, core vocabulary? Does it have phrase-based language? Like it has all of those different things that are, that live in every single system that we could consider when you guys talk to us about, well, this is what he needs and this is what she needs and this is what she says already and she doesn't, um, use it for this, et cetera, et cetera. Like all of those things we, we kind of run through when we're looking at and systems. Every app is not the same. So, you know, every app has, can be power, I mean, well, not every, there's lots of powerful apps, but they still take a different twist. That's what makes them unique. That's what puts them, sets them apart. But then again, beginning to, on the student, we may like that part. And I've, I've many times said, I wish I could get just like, whoosh, you know, I'm going to develop my own app. It's got a little bit of everything, but. Um, but yeah, we have to think about all aspects of that student. Yeah, so hopefully some of those um, resources help kind of guide you or wrap your head around it, or at least you can say, oh, well, why why would we look at, you know, a Toby Dynavox system and Snapcore first over looking at Unity and Lampworks for Life? Why would we do that? Like, why would you recommend that, Laura? Um, so if you're wanting to kind of dive in and, and think like a facilitator, <laughs> those resources are there to kind of reference. And, and obviously we're here too, and we can always answer those right. questions, but, um, There's lots it, of videos on YouTube. You know, you could just go watch a video about both different kinds of things, and yeah. yeah. So that's what I I get. I would love to see more knowledge of what's going on for our staff to take advantage of, as far as just their familiarity and comfort would be helpful to just reach out on their own. They they don't have to wait for us to. Right. And, and again, that, that ATP um, reference and resource, like you can do some of those assessments on your own. Those are free resources and assessments that you can tap into before we even show up for the set. And we will be very impressed and probably bring you cookies if you do some of that work ahead of time. <laughs> Sorry, that's just yeah. me. I tend to bring chocolate and cookies. Yeah, Laura's anyway. good about food. I'll, I'll have to stock my car because I'll forget that morning where I'm yeah. going. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I've been losing friends this year because I haven't been able to stop <laughs> Chocolate. Uh, oh, you're like that little guy that says, I love you, Molly, when you give me a cookie. Sometimes I don't like you, but I love you when you give me a cookie. It's a great video. It's totally true, too. We, we got some, we got some, we, we, somebody brought down some cookies for us today. And I was yes, like, did. and I and it, immediately. It's close to lunchtime, so I got to go eat my cookie. That's right. I immediately became their friend. It was great. Uh, so, you know, so, so that's a little bit about the set. Um, you know, it's not, it's not one and done. It's not a single not meeting. Magic. It's not an assessment. It's not magic. Um, yeah. Yeah. I guess this, the title of our episode should probably set. It's not dot, yeah. dot, dot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but we hope you hope, have a little bit more about what a set is and some resources to go along with it. Um, we'll, we'll talk about a few more highlighted tools and we'll give you an activity and then, um, and then, yeah, we will, we will, we will check you on the other side of summer because yes, we, yes. it's our last episode. We are, we are done. Are you going to do anything fun this summer, Cheryl? Oh, sit down and relax. It's my big, big plan. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. Come hold a baby. <laughs> oh yes. That's, that sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll both be busy. We hope you guys um, have a wonderful summer. Have a, hope it's as busy as you want it to be and as relaxing as you want it to be. And reach out, let us know what's, what you're thinking, what's going on. We'd love to help. Yeah, as far as, um, no, no spoiler alerts, but we have a we have a very long list of episodes for next year that we're going to tackle, and we hope to see you guys um, in here, let, listen, get your feedback of, of some new episodes and some and new more faces. More chances to get some uh, continuing ed credit, too. Don't forget about that. All, all the things, all the things. So we hope you liked this first uh, series, season, yes, season <laughs> of, the, of AAC Innovations, and we will check you out for, for next year. All right. Take care. Hi guys, it's Laura. And so for today's AAC Innovative Tool, I just want to highlight a few different uh, feature reference, feature match references that will sometimes pull up in a set 
um, or a meeting, a follow-up meeting with families and staff to help guide kind of the conversation around what we might consider for um, for the student. So the first one I want to show you is just the person itself. And this comes out of AAC Tech Connect. This is actually a little bit of a difficult find these days. Uh, you really have to kind of search for it, but we'll include it in the episode notes for you. Um, but we just want to point out that there are a lot of skills and uh, abilities that we look at with a student as far as access and their functional skills to be able to um, assess for communication device. So you can see we do look at the language components and their current communication as well as their history of AAC and just how, how they're using their body to communicate, whether that be symbolically or pre-symbolically. We look at their access, so we look at their fine motor skills, we look at their gross motor skills, um, we look at their positioning, all of that. We look at their vision. Um, we look at their hearing. You can tell these are all things that we've kind of highlighted in previous episodes as far as different components of how um, it it plays into communication. And then um, looking at access modifications too. Again, thinking about our episode on with OI on um, how we might adapt access to help them better access their AAC system. And then um, whether that be direct access or scanning. So that is a really great resource to kind of think about um, and use if you are looking at um, assessing a student's communication and their, their skills um, and access needs with your facilitator. Then when we go and we look at features of devices, there's all these different components, right? There's symbols and what level of symbols they might need as far as representation. There's how they formulate their message. And um, this can be variable depending upon what features you have in systems. So um, many people know semantic compaction within the LAMP, Words for Life, or the Unity systems and softwares because it um, in itself means that one picture might symbolic, symbolically represent more than one thing. So again, a frog might mean go, and a frog might be places that you go versus just hitting the word frog and having say go. Um, again, routine phrases is in here, a single key message with a one key hit. That was, like I said, frog, hit frog, hit go, or hit the arrow for PCS, and it means go. Um, looking at grammar, looking at telegraphic sentences where it might have sentence prediction built in. All of those uh, are message formulation components of, of a feature in a device we might consider. Then we have organization as well. So you can have single meaning pictures, you can have multi-meaning pictures, visual scenes, uh, phrase-based core words, again, those 80% of words that we recycle throughout our day, categories, situations, and context, and then alphabet and spelling. Um, we also have page changes and navigations. Who's gonna be controlling navigating through the pages? Is it a static display where it doesn't change, or is it dynamic where it will change? How many pages? Uh, we can get into all of that. We look at the size of the keys. We look at the action, um, if they need visual or um, access changes to help support their access needs. So looking at zoom and enlarge, does the feature have touch or swipe available? Um, do we need to turn those features off? And then keyboard, looking at what kind of keyboards they offer, um, looking at the speech, there's different speech options for our students, looking at the message display bar itself, so where those words are going to go after the student activates them. So is it just the text? Is it pictures and the text? Does it speak every word? Um, those are all different things that we can control within a lot of our softwares. We've got rate enhancement. And then we've got, uh, with rate enhancement, you know, thinking about how can we make it faster and more efficient for our users, especially those that are more proficient. And then device functions. So who's going to be controlling that uh, as far as the initial onset of a trial? So that's the features of a system. And then again, within those features, so if you're like, I don't know how what, what systems and softwares have those features, we actually created a resource a few years back 
so it's a little dated, but it looks at all these features and uh, based off of the app or software you might be using. So it's a nine page um, kind of graphic that looks at your company. So this one is a system where that makes Proloquo to go and Proloquo for text. And then it breaks it down by those areas we just talked about within the feature match. So symbol representation, message formulation, language representation, navigation, speech, message display, and access. And you can see that um, there are X's when you're considering something for a student on what your student needs so you can cross-reference for the different softwares that are available here. Um, so you, we have softwares for everything from AbleNet to uh, FRS to TouchChat, InnovaChat, Saltillo, Toby Dynavox, anything that we have recommended in the past we try to kind of include on this list. So as I mentioned, it's a few years dated, we need to update it, but it's something. So if you're one who's like, well, why did Lara or Cheryl recommend that app that I'm not sure why? Again, you would cross-reference and think, okay, well, this student needs telegraphic sentences. So um, we may not want to do Unity One Hit. We may want to consider something more like Word Power because that has that capability in it. Uh, if you have questions, though, after looking at this, reach out. We're around and uh, hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching. Hi, guys. It's Cheryl Livingston, and I'm still at the mall. I can't find my way out. So while I was here, I did a little shopping. Found another game that we might want to play, therapy or at home. And um, also, this is my last time to show you a fun game or toy um, for this, our first podcast year. So this is pretty exciting. And what a better way to end the year than with Gooey Louie. It's your turn to pick a winner. And by pick, I do mean his nose. So this game, another one of those that you just never know what's going to happen, involves this guy. Oh, his tongue comes out on both sides. And a bag full of gooeys. Okay. And they're green, so they're not showing up really well on my screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to load him up. And what there is, is there's one inside there that's connected to this little lever so that when you pull it, his head pops, his brain pops out, and his eyes bug out. So it's lots of fun. You never know what's going to happen. And we never know who's going to get the right one, the magic one. So I'm going to reassemble him now, put the brain back in. And this is, again, we're talking about vocabulary. It needs help. We have to push down. I'm still not getting it. Let me close it, put his eyes back in, and then we put our boogers in, or our gooeys, they call them. So I'm just going to load it up with a bunch of these green rubbery goos, and my hope is that we can get lots of turn taking. We want to work on that social communication of going back and forth, you know, my turn, your turn. But what I kind of like about him is he's, you know, he's big, he's, you know, substantial size here that maybe we need to work on physically passing to the next communication partner whose turn it is. Um, I like the idea that, you know, it's um, funny and silly and that there's, you know, you just never know what's gonna happen. The idea of course, is you reach up in there <laughs> and you pull out one of the gooeys. So, um, you know, our students that are into exploring and reaching will have fun. If that's hard, if it's hard to get your finger up in there, we might have to find something to adapt. We might need to do like a pipe cleaner or something to kind of make a hook to pull them down. You could probably maybe do a little head start kind of a thing where you, <laughs> but once they start falling, they just fall straight down. Um, but, Again, you might find you might have a, a little way to help. 
We could also, um, as far as communication goes, you know, comment on I like it, I don't like it, if it's going to pop, um, it makes me happy, it makes me, um, I said the word scared seems a little intense here too, but it's just like, you know, the anticipation of it is, oh, is it going to happen? Uh, we never know for sure, like I said, his brain popping out is what's going to fly, so where is it going to go, where is it? Um, we might have to search, look under, <laughs> uh, look behind, depending on what kind of furniture is in the room. So Gooey Louie is fun for all kinds of activities. He's um, ready to go. He's a guy that's ready, easy to please. And his brain just blew out. So if you're having a day where you feel like your brain is wanting to leave your head, maybe Gooey Louie and you can relate and have some fun. It's a... Uh, easy game to order on Amazon and he's ready to spend some time with you. So we hope you invite Gooey Louie to your next therapy session or your next home game night and uh, have lots and lots of fun. Thanks. Talk to you later.